So we are well aware that there are four different types of structural chromosomal aberrations. These are chromosome duplication in which a segment of chromosome gets duplicated, then deletion in the chromosome where a segment of chromosome is missing. Third one is chromosome inversion in which a segment of chromosome gets inverted 180 degree. And the fourth one is translocation where a segment of chromosome gets translocated or shifted to a non-homologous chromosome. In this presentation, I'm going to explain chromosome inversion, that is types of inversion, what would be the consequence of the presence of such inversion in the individual, particularly in the formation of gametes, and how a inversion is created. So in this picture, you can see that two chromosomes are shown. This left one is a normal chromosome because the gene arrangement in this chromosome is in normal order or in normal sequence. You can see here, suppose we are considering this particular area. The upper one is a broad colored portion followed by two other bands and then there is a light area. Now suppose two breaks occur in this chromosome. Okay, one break occurs in the upper side, the other one occurs in the lower side. And then after the break, this broken segment gets inverted 180 degree and then rejoins with the same chromosome. So the result will be the formation of this inverted chromosome. In this inverted chromosome, we are observing that this light area is now situated on the upper side, followed by two light, you know, two uh, colored bands which are narrower and then this broader dark band. So we find that there is complete inversion or rotation of this segment in the chromosome. So here the gene order gets inverted. So this is the way an inversion is created. For creation of an inversion, two breaks will have to take place. So we are observing that two breaks are there. And then this broken segment will have to be inverted 180 degree. Okay, and its rejoining will have to be there. So these three events will have to take place. That is two breaks will have to occur. Then this segment will have to get inverted and rejoining to the same chromosome. Now, what we are observing in this particular case that uh, this inverted segment, it does not include the centromere. Okay, this primary constriction is actually centromere. It is not included in the inverted segment. So this type of case in which centromere is not located in the inverted area, is actually a case of paracentric inversion. Means paracentric inversions are those inversions which does not include the centromere. Whereas the other type of chromosome inversion is pericentric inversion in which the broken segment will include the centromere. So if two breaks are occurring in the chromosome, one is occurring on one side of the centromere, the other break is taking place on the other side of centromere, and then that broken segment gets inverted. In that situation, centromere is included in the inverted area, so that will be a pericentric inversion. So this is the difference between paracentric and pericentric inversion. Now in this slide, you can see that there is an individual who is heterozygous and that is heterozygous for paracentric inversion. Means one chromosome, see this is a chromosome, it possesses the gene sequence as A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, these are six genes which are located on this chromosome and its homologous chromosome is this one, which is having inverted gene sequence, particularly this B, C, D. If we consider this B, C, D means these three genes, it is in inverted order. So we find that instead of B, here it is D, then C, and then B. So this portion is inverted. And we are observing that this particular inverted segment is not including the centromere. Centromere is away from this inverted 
portion. So it is a case of parasitic inversion. Now an individual being heterozygous for this will show a particular situation. Uh, we have to consider especially uh, the meiotic cell division, means during meiotic uh, cell division or meiosis, which occurs in the germ cells, we find that the two homologous chromosomes come together. They pair with each other throughout their length. And uh, uh, that pairing will be occurring during Paketine stage of meiosis 1. So this situation we can observe uh, that if meiosis occurs and the two chromosomes, the two homologous chromosomes, uh, definitely they will be having their sister chromatids. So this first chromosome, it is being represented by its two sister chromatids. Okay, each chromosome will get duplicated actually before uh, entering into a cell division process because during S phase, the uh, chromosome content will get totally, you know, duplicated. And here this uh, homologous chromosome will also be having its sister chromatids. And these two chromosomes will have to pair during meiotic division. So what we will find that there will be gene to gene pairing. And in that process, the area which is inverted one will actually form a loop that is referred as heterozygous loop. So this loop structure will be seen only in the inverted area. See, this is a chromosome, or you can say chromatid, in which the gene order is A, B, C, D. Its homologous one is also having A, B, C, D, you know, gene sequence. But this inverted one will try to pair with its homologous part, and that is why a heterozygous loop will be formed here. Now, the main thing is that if crossing over occurs in the inverted area, so two chromatids, see these two non-sister chromatids, they are shown to participate in crossing over. Suppose crossing over occurs at this point uh, between the non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosome. So what would be its consequence? We can observe its consequence in the gametes, means actually uh, when this cell entering uh, in the uh, gametogenesis means it is a germ cell suppose it has entered into gametogenesis so it will form four gametes and we will have to see the distribution of these chromosomes in such gametes that we can observe in this slide see one of the gametes out of four gametes formed from a single cell undergoing meiotic division one particular gamete will have a chromosome in which all the genes will be arranged in normal order. So that is a chromosome which has not participated in crossing over. You will find A, B, C, D, E, F. So genes are there in normal sequence and it has actually not participated in crossing over. So we observe such situation. Now the other one which has participated in crossing over may have two centromeres. See one centromere is located here, the other one is here. And we find that A gene is duplicated twice, A, B, C, D, and A, means when we will see the real consequence of crossing over uh, in the chromosome, then we will find that in this particular gamete, there will be two centromere, or during uh, separation of chromosomes, it, this chromosome may get broken also. Okay, but uh, such chromosome will have dicentric uh, situation and they may have duplication as well as deletion of certain genes. Likewise, in the third gamete we find that a chromosome is reaching which is having normal gene, normal in the sense that all the genes are located. But we find that some of the genes are in inverted order like A, D, C, B. So this portion is inverted. But since all the genes are there, so it will have, it will be a normal gamete. Okay, but this chromatid also did not participate in crossing over. That is why it is having normal, you know, means all the genes located on it, although some of the genes are in inverted order, particularly that area which is inverted. And then the fourth one, fourth gamete will also be non-viable because it will not have centromere at all. So it is acentric uh, chromosome 
where duplication is also there, deletion of certain genes are there. So such type of gamete will be inviable. So the consequence will be that 50% of gametes will be only viable. Remaining 50% will be inviable gametes. We find that the uh, gamete in which the first chromosome, this one goes, it will be viable. Likewise, that gamete will be viable in which this third chromosome is going. Others will have dicentric uh, you know, situation or acentric situation. Then we can see the consequence of a pericentric inversion. So here, pericentric inversion heterozygote is shown. We are observing that this one is the centromere and the portion which is inverted is B, C, D. See here, it is B, C, D. This portion is inverted. So on this chromosome, the gene order is A, B, C, D, E, F. That is normal gene sequence is there. But in the homologous chromosome, the gene order is A, D, C, B, and then E, F. It means B, C, D, this portion is inverted. And we are, we are seeing that this centromere is located in the inverted portion. So it is a pericentric inversion heterozygote. Now, if meiotic division will occur in the germ cells of this individual, then these two homologous chromosomes will undergo meiotic pairing. And during packetin stage, they will be maximally pairing with each other. So we find that each chromosome is now being represented uh, in their sister chromatid form. So the first one, these are two sister chromatids of the first chromosome on which normal gene sequence is present. The second one, second homologous chromosome is that one in which pericentric inversion is there. So because of inverted gene segment, uh, there will be heterozygous loop present in that portion where, it's inver where inversion is there. Now, if crossing over occurs, between non-sister chromatids of these two homologous chromosomes, then what would be its consequence? Whether it will exactly show the same situation as we have just seen in case of paracentric inversion, or it will pose a different condition. So that we can see in this uh, slide where the resultant gametes are shown. So four different types of gametes will be found. And we will find that the first gamete will have normal gene sequence. See all A, B, C, D, E, F genes are present in it. So this will actually be a normal gamete. Then the second one is that gamete in which duplication or deletion will be there. It has actually participated in the crossing over. So the consequence of crossing over will be that it will have duplication as well as deletion of certain genes like a, B, C, D, and A means A gene is being duplicated. And then E, F, these two are totally missing. So it is having deletion also. In the third you know, gamete, you see the uh, gene arrangement uh, means all the genes are there, A, B, C, D, E, F, all the genes are there. Only thing is that the inverted portion is present over here. So this will also be a normal gamete. But the fourth gamete will again be having abnormality because here some of the genes are duplicated and certain genes are actually deleted. Like E, here F, E, B, C, D, E, F, these are the genes. So we find that F, E, these genes are being duplicated. A is totally missing. So there is duplication as well as deletion. But in this particular case, dicentric or acentric situation will not arise at all. We will find that 50% of the gametes will be totally normal because they will have normal gene sequence or they will have all the genes, but in inverted order, some of the genes in inverted order, whereas other 50% gametes will have abnormalities because they will have either duplication or deletion of certain genes. So, these are some of the salient or important points pertaining to uh, the two different types of inversions, which we find uh, to be present in uh, Drosophila uh, or in grasshoppers or even in human beings. Inversions are reported 
and uh, the consequence of such inversions um, what would be the real consequence of such inversions we can understand by going through this presentation